Guys, I'm back from Star Wars Celebration. Who wants to talk about Battlefront? Guys? Guys? Oh. Hey, Wes. Welcome back. Hey, I just got back from Star Wars Celebration. Battlefront. I saw Battlefront. I'm so pumped on Star Wars. Do you want to talk about Star Wars? Yeah. You know, I've always thought that Jar Jar was like a totally underappreciated character in that series. We can talk about that. All right. Hey, so I just got back from Star Wars Celebration and I really want to talk about Battlefront and also just Star Wars in general. So I found Lorenzo, the biggest, I basically found the biggest Star Wars fan in the yeah, office that I could funny. from Games Radar. Got my shirt on and everything so for the day. Yeah. Uh, and I hear you have the best Chewbacca impression. Uh, right? No, that would Not be true. other staff members on the GR staff. You can't, you can't do Chewbacca. No, huh? I can't do it. I, no. I brought Chewbacca with us. I know. Just oh, so that, his presence I'm pretty jealous. I'm pretty jealous of Original Return of the Jedi mug. And you got them on the, the show floor on celebration, On the show floor right? at celebration. Jeez. So many vendors selling figures. I picked up Admiral Akbar. I mean, how many cross, crossbar lightsabers did you, did you see at the I only saw one, but it was the one from Force Awakens that they used for filming. Oh I got God. to go in a room with all the props. I, I would have thought that some guy would have just went straight to his basement as soon as he saw the, the first trailer, yeah. started like, I didn't see any of that all stuff. All this stuff together. Yeah. I saw yeah. lots of just like plastic lightsabers and stuff. <laughs> anyway, also got to see Battlefront uh -huh. while I was there geeking about, about all things Star Wars. You saw the trailer. I did. What yep. did you think of that? Uh, first off, it's beautiful. It's like, really pretty. The game looks absolutely amazing. The uh, Endor scene, uh, there's like a less than two second clip of like Hoth that looked like a clip from like a movie. And there's like two seconds of Boba Fett yeah, yeah. flying over the surface yeah. of Sullust, which yeah. is a planet that I don't think has been in any Star Wars game uh, before. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. And it's barely ever mentioned like in the movies at all. Basically you just know Celestins are yeah. at a race and that's it. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. But you know, they're gonna have a lava planet yeah. and then ice planets and desert and and I guess four, so they have all these like polar opposites that the, the four planets are coming in. And then uh, like a few things you notice too in the, the game, well there's Darth Vader, Darth Vader's coming Vader's back. In there, yep. So you know, all the, the battlefront stuff is uh, like, the hero it seems characters. like he's gonna be like a kill streak or Yeah, you'll, you'll like be able that. to, I don't think they talked exactly about how you'll get to play the heroes. Like in Battlefront 2, you would, if you'd get like 15 kills in a row or something, yeah. you know, you, then you'd get to like become Obi-Wan or become Vader or somebody right, right. and just kind of go around wrecking people. It right, seems right. like they're gonna bring back, it's probably something pretty yeah, similar to the way you unlock them. That, hopefully. And uh, you know, just the, the Rebels gadgets, they had kind of the, uh, the Gungan shield generator things that yeah, you little, see in the like, movies. Force, force shields. They also had thermal detonators, kind right, of like right. obvious. It's just a grenade. Yeah, and, the easy stuff. And rocket launchers, like heavy duty yeah, stuff. We've so. seen those in the previous Battlefront games and stuff. Uh, and there, there's, they didn't show too much of it, but there is some, uh, you know, ship to ship battles going on in in the trailer. There's like a one second clip. Some dog again. fighting. Yeah, yeah, some dog fighting. The X wings and Y wings came in, flying and bombing things. I, that might be like some kind of kill streak thing too. Yeah. So did you you used to actually do a Games Radar show where you kind of just riffed on what you <laughs> yeah. wanted to see out of Battlefront. Was yeah, there yeah. any stuff, so I'm guessing with this trailer, you probably watched it a few times. Did oh, you, a few Did times, you pick yeah. up any tiny details that you're kind of interested in? Uh, I thought it was interesting that you could be different species. So you, there's the Celestians and there's a, uh, a, a few other aliens. I'm not exactly sure what uh, they're called, but the green guy. Yeah, he, yeah he, I actually wrote in my notes when right. I was watching the game, like, can play as Celestin and green guy, because yeah. I couldn't remember yeah, what look, his race look was. Yeah, look that one up. But uh, yeah, it seems like you could you could choose the race. Maybe it's like a class-based thing, who knows. Uh, and the you know, Darth Vader characters, Boba Fett characters coming in. Uh, one thing we always wanted to do was, you know, start on the surface of a planet then fly up into the atmosphere and you know go dogfight in space but it seems that's not going to be yeah so uh, i case. i had an opportunity to 
interview a couple of people at DICE mm -hmm. and ask them some questions. They weren't talking about much about the game. Right. They did confirm there aren't space battles, at least at launch. Right. You know, they're, they obviously aren't talking about like future DLC or add-ons or anything. I would not be surprised if space battles eventually right, are right. a feature they add, but in the launching game, it's all planetary stuff. But you right. will be able to dogfight on the surface. I think the one clip in the trailer that had me most excited, honestly, is the scene where the TIE fighter like l drops down out of the hangar and then like starts to launch out just because it looked right, really right. cool. I really like the idea of like launching out of a base into a fighter and then yeah. going into a dogfight. But yeah, no space battles is kind of a bummer. It's also only going to be 40 players as opposed to 64, which was is the max for Battlefield and is also the max for like the old Star Wars Battlefront 2 right. had 64 players. Um, but in addition to talking to them, I also got to see like a six minute gameplay sequence right. that they haven't shown publicly yet. Uh, and, and that was more interesting than the trailer, but mm -hmm. I still found it kind of disappointed, disappointing because it's very scripted. So we got to see a, a fight on Endor where you're following a rebel troop as he kind of walks through the forest and then Stormtroopers come by on speeder bikes and they get shot and explode and they showed some little kind of like uh, kill streak stuff where you, he killed a few stormtroopers mm -hmm. in a row and it kind of highlighted that and then he killed somebody and it was like you killed your nemesis that right. kind of thing but that was all kind of just like placeholder UI it felt like very minimal and then they showed all of the big set piece stuff they wanted us to be excited about where an ATSD walks in and then somebody uses a jetpack to fly up <laughs> in the air and blow it up with a rocket. ATAT -AT comes in and then the, he, uh, like the rebel trooper interacted with some kind of little like satellite node right. and that was what called in the Y-wings to bomb the ATAT -AT walker. And so that's gonna be a mode called Walker Assault. So you okay. can kind of picture an Imperial team and a Rebel team and the Imperials have their AT-ATs and they're trying to go destroy some objective. The Rebels are obviously trying to destroy the Walkers, but they wouldn't talk about how any of it worked. Right. So they wouldn't confirm that there are people piloting the AT-ATs in that instance, even though they said they'll be controllable. You know, they weren't talking about how the objective system would work, any of that stuff. So it's kind of disappointing that they just showed this very linear playthrough. Like, I didn't even get to see how spawning in the game works. Yeah, it was real scripted for you. Very, yeah. very scripted, So yeah. how, did, how did it look uh, compared to the, the trailer? I know there's a lot of a kind of concern, you know, on, on the yeah. internet. People are like, yeah, that it's, looks doctored. And, it's you know. in engine, right, but right, it right. wasn't necessarily in match assets, right, right, right that they right. used for the trailer. So from what I saw, the game still looks incredible. Uh -huh. um, I would have to do a really close like side-by-side -side comparison to say what looked different. Mm -hmm. But I think really the only things that looked different when I watched the gameplay was you didn't have as much like cinematic depth of field stuff going on. You didn't have the really dynamic camera movements going on. But right. otherwise, I feel like the character models and the, the forest and that stuff, it all looked pretty much the same to me. The explosions looked really, really good. Did you get to see any of the, uh, the third person gameplay? I, I know that's I like a, yeah, big, they switched, that's a big one on the wish they list. They switched yeah. in, in between. It started out kind of this peaceful looking around the forest and then a gun appears and then mm -hmm. he does some run and gun first person and then pulled out to third person. Awesome. Uh, it looked more like old Battlefront than Battlefield, I would say. Okay. Like the, it's still really hard to tell kind of how weighty the characters will be and stuff like that. I think from that perspective, it's not gonna be the old floaty, goofy Battlefront 2 feel. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like the aiming reticule and stuff, there's no pulling the laser, you know, rifle, the blaster rifle up to your shoulder and doing like aim down sights that I okay. saw. Like that's not in there. Mm. Doesn't feel like a modern military game. It feels like you've got your aiming reticule in the center of the screen and you're just kind of well, aiming, everybody, all the characters old, in the, the movies school. they just kind of blast just anywhere, anywhere yeah. anyway. So there's know, no aiming it, in Star Wars. It's really. true to the lore. I think um, the main thing that I'm really curious about now is how this game is going to feel compared to Battlefront 2 and where you know where it's going to go more like Battlefield where the big AAA influence is going to come in versus I'm, I don't know how much Battlefront 2 you played I loved that game but it was janky and goofy, right. but that yeah, was kind yeah. of the appeal, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's gonna be the appeal of this new game in the Frostbite engine where everything is beautiful and right, right. weighty and, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's curious. I'm, I'm curious to see how they handle the, um, 
the, the big characters like Darth Vader and, and Boba Fett, will you be, you know, shooting Boba Fett in the head and then he like falls down and dies? Or will they One be, shot kill. Yeah, will they be doing that kind of stuff? Because it kind of throws you off a little bit. And I'm curious to see how they, they handle that. And uh, one thing in uh, the Battlefront games was too, you could, you know, control ATSCs and, you know, ATATs. You could actually jump in those sometimes and, you know, control them. I wonder if they'll allow you to do those kinds of things. Yeah, too. They, I mean, they've said you'll be able to control most of the, like, those kind of major mm -hmm. vehicles. The Millennium Falcon was yeah, in yeah. the trailer for a second. I think you'll be able to pilot all that stuff. It'll probably control pretty well, too, because the right. Battlefield games. You know, if you if you really want to pilot a jet and pilot it well, and you have like your own joystick set up, you right. can do that. I think this game will be, I think it'll be similar in that regard. The thing that I'm kind of disappointed about right now, and maybe it's premature since I haven't played the game yet. But the thing I loved about Battlefront was that they were they brought in some of that expanded universe right, stuff. Right. They went to some planets that you don't always see in the movies, or you maybe see them for a little bit, but they weren't you know major major planets and I love that they just kind of brought some of that stuff in and this game is very focused on original trilogy like we got, we're going to Hoth again we're right, going right. to tow cable ATATs for the 40th time yeah. we're going to Endor you know. I think it's so it's totally interesting that they're doing the DLC the way they're doing it too because yeah. they're, they're adding the the Battle of Jakku which is which totally is, new yeah it's beyond the original trilogy so it's kind of like a tie in to the movie and they're releasing that just like what two a weeks week before, or two before, before, the, movie, before yeah. the movie, so maybe that'll be some kind of like setup, like you get a little bit more context to what's going on, you know, in this thirty-year gap between, uh, you know, Jedi and Awakens, and uh, you know, maybe you'll get to see some characters, or you'll get to see you know what the environment of the galaxy is after you know Palpatine's dead and, yeah. and Vader's dead, and you that is see all this that stuff. is really exciting, and you know. I, I hope this game has mod support on PC. Mm. I think it's pretty unlikely that it will because DICE and EA games just generally do not have mod support. Mm -hmm. But if that does end up being a component, I love the idea that this kind of, them building this great sandbox in this incredibly beautiful engine mm -hmm. and then letting people build their own like Yavin 4 or yeah. you know whatever planet they want they want to go to. There's a lot of options out there right. in the Star Wars galaxy like let people make those planets, make maps for that stuff, and yeah. you know, just build that out. I'm sure everybody would want to see the Battle of Geonosis go through in this engine. You know, an, an alternate version of the Battle of Hoth, whatever. You know, yeah. just whatever else. Just make up cool, uh -huh. weird Star Wars stuff. So yeah. I hope that happens. I hope the game doesn't isn't kind of taking itself too seriously. They talk yeah. a lot about like being true to the lore and being authentic and stuff. So you know, maybe we won't get that old. Battlefront 2 goofiness, but I mean, I'm excited to see more of it. I think we'll probably see more at E3, mm -hmm. and it's only six months out, so yeah. Yeah, before you know it, it's coming real fast. In the meantime, I'm gonna drink out of Chewbacca. Chewy face. Hey everybody, Tom and Wes here with the Q&A portion of the PC Gamer Show, where we take your questions on whatever's on your mind this week in PC gaming. Wes, what do we have first? So our first question this week comes from 90% of the people who are probably gonna comment on this episode, and it's, how could you like Jar Jar? Oh my God, are you stupid? So uh, I, I do a lot of things for this show that might not be entirely factual, like trying to throw up, or not entirely uh, uh, fair, like being sprayed with air. Stop it! But uh, what Tom is trying to say <laughs> is that he does not actually like Jar Jar. I don't. That was a bit. It was I'm, for your entertainment. Yeah. He, please don't hate me for saying that Jar Jar Binks is, is underrepresented. Now that's out of the way, let's move on to a real question. Yes. Our actual question comes from Twitter, at Aviat underscore DJ. Is it really worth installing Steam OS and playing on Linux? I guess there should be an improvement, but how big is it? So I would say if you only have one computer and it's running Windows right now, there's not much of a reason to switch over to Steam OS. For one thing, you're not going to have the full range of Linux functionality when you're installing SteamOS unless you're kind of doing some hacky stuff to go to the desktop. It's not really ideal for your everyday computing. If you have a second computer maybe that's in your living room and you want to install SteamOS on it, go for it. You're going to see 
pretty comparable performance to Windows for games that are well optimized, like Valve's games if you're playing CSGO, Portal, Portal 2, that kind of thing. In general though, you're not gonna get better performance on Linux in most games to my knowledge. I'm not an expert on Linux, but it's not gonna like magically turn your five-year-old hardware into a gaming beast. Uh, it's just kind of a nice lightweight OS for something that you are running as a secondary gaming rig. Yeah, so it's good, but don't feel the need to switch over. Yeah, def simply. definitely not. Thanks very much. Uh, if you have anything that you want to ask us that's on your mind this week in PC gaming, use the hashtag AskPCGamer on our Facebook page, Twitter, our YouTube channel, our Steam group, or in the comments of this video at PCGamer.com. And if you haven't watched this far, be sure to tell me how much of an idiot I am for liking Jar Jar Binks in the comments below. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next week. Tom loves Jar Jar. I, I don't.